Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about second Passover. We're gonna be talking about when it is, and we're gonna be talking about why it is, what's the purpose of it, and what it is that we're supposed to be doing on that day. So get your calendar out and get ready to mark it up. Be prepared to leave a comment as we go. And if you would, go ahead and hit that like button. It's always easier to remember to do it at the beginning of the video than at the end of the video. Because if I do a good job, you'll have way more to think about than the YouTube algorithm. But anyway, before we get into our Father's plan for our salvation, let's have a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar, the official timepiece of the 144,000. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachinafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. Now, we're looking here at Google, where I went in and just did a search for Second Passover. Now, the name of Second Passover, the Jewish name is Pesach Shinai, which simply means Second Passover. And we see here, according to Google, the time of the Second Passover is on the evening of Thursday, May the 4th. Now, it's important to note the timing of this Passover. It's actually the twilight hours. Now, looking over here at our calendar, we see that that's actually Thursday evening. Right after the sun goes down is when we're supposed to be doing this communion celebration. But that brings me to my next point, and that's what it is that we're supposed to do on Passover. We're looking here in Leviticus chapter 23 at verse 5, where it simply says that the 14th day of the month at twilight is the Passover. And of course, it's in Numbers chapter 9 that we find out that those who missed first Passover are allowed to keep second Passover on the 14th day of the second month. And that's really important to note. It points to the importance of this holy day understanding that our father allowed us to have a second chance in the first place. The Passover is the marriage supper. It's the union between our spirit and the Holy Spirit or the spirit of our father. And if we miss that, we can actually be considered heathen and be counted like the rebels. So this is extremely important. And this is why we actually get two chances to do it in a year, once in the first month and once in the second month. But notice back here in Leviticus chapter 23, again, it doesn't tell us what we are supposed to be doing. So let me see if I can make you understand this real quick. The issue is, is that we are dealing with three different eras, three different times, three different milestones in our spiritual evolution. The first being back there with Moses where we learned that the Passover was all about a lamb, which they put the blood on the doorposts. So back in the time of Moses, the Passover would have consisted of sacrificing lambs and spreading blood around. And then we learn in the New Testament that our Messiah made a modification to this, where it wasn't so important about a physical lamb and its blood, but he said that the Passover was about the bread, which represented his body and the wine, which represented his blood. So now in the New Testament, we're not so much worried about the blood of a physical lamb, but it is the blood of our Messiah that is put on the doorposts of our heart. So for many of us, the Passover will consist of the roasted lamb as well as the bread and the wine of the New Testament. But to really understand what Passover is about, we must look in the Third Testament of the Bible. This, along with the great book of true life from which the Third Testament is compiled, make up the spirit and the truth that we were promised in this time. In other words, what our Messiah was talking about 2000 years ago, returning in spirit and truth, well, he did so in the form of the word of God, once again, here in what we know as the third testament of the Bible. And in the very first chapter 
of this great book of true life, down in about verse 15, we start to hear about Passover and what it truly means. So let me go ahead and just read it. Verse 16 says, Today I have come to repeat my word, reminding you of teachings of past eras. However, I do not come to remind you of the communion in the form that our Messiah symbolized during the second era with bread and wine. The time in which the physical bread was offered in representation of my word has passed. Today, the bread is my word and the sacred wine is the divine essence, which I grant you spiritually at every moment. So. Guys, this is huge when it comes to Passover and our understanding of what is actually going on there. The key element that we must understand is that the word, the scripture, what we know as the Bible, did not exist in the time of our Messiah. So when he was saying that the bread represented his body, which was the word of God, what he was telling us was that our Passover would consist of reading this scripture in this time that we live in now. In other words, Passover is all about the scripture. And that's what it's saying there. He says, today, the bread is my word. So that is the scripture, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Third Testament of the Bible is the bread of this communion festival. So on the evening of May the 4th, Right in the twilight hours, right after the sun goes down, is when we will start our Passover celebration, which consists of the word of God. Now, like I said, there are some people who will have a lamb and there will be some people who will have the wine and the bread. But that would only be symbolic, representing the first two eras, with the main understanding being the scripture in which they are reading. And then you look here, it goes on to say that the sacred wine is the divine essence. Now, this divine essence is important. We see here in verse 100 of teaching 12 that the divine essence actually lives in our conscience, which is where our father lives, we learn in the Third Testament. Then look down here in teaching 36 verse 24 which says remember that i am the word of the father that the divine essence which you receive in this word is the light from the creative spirit which has left a part of my spirit in each one of you so this again is pointing to our conscious now i plan to do a whole study on this whole divine essence because this is actually the wine of passover not necessarily that which comes from a grape but we're being told to allow this divine essence to be placed on our doorposts. So now, if you think about this, the lamb is equivalent to the bread, which is equivalent to the scripture. But inside that lamb is its blood. The lamb and its blood actually go together. So just like back there in Moses' time when they were eating the flesh of that lamb, its blood was entering their system. You got to remember, he wasn't allowed to touch water or anything like that. So the essence of that lamb actually became a part of the humans that consumed it. Well, here in the third era, recognizing that the lamb is the scripture, the word of God. In reading that scripture, that divine essence is being spread about us. I know that's a little bit tricky, and I believe it's just, just overly simplified. Just think about it this way. You can read the scripture and not allow it to have an effect on you. In fact, there are many people who are doing that, reading the Bible only to find errors and reasons that they can marginalize it. Well, you can imagine that the essence of what our father is truly trying to say to them is not reaching their heart. So on Passover, what we're being told to do is not only read the scripture, but actually meditate on it and allow its essence to reach us. What is truly saying behind all of the symbolism and metaphors, we're actually able to find what our father truly wants us to know. Well, that's that divine essence. And that's what we'll be doing on the evening right after sunset on May the 4th. But 
that's not it, guys. That's only the beginning of this week-long journey that we know as the spring festivals. It starts with the purification process, which is the communion of Passover. But then there's a week-long celebration known as Unleavened Bread, which we will actually continue reading that scripture. And I would suggest you read the Third Testament of the Bible or listen to it. Consume it somehow because it is in the divine essence found in that scripture that we'll find our salvation in these tribulous times. So the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, of course, is the 15th. That will correspond to the evening of May the 5th with the whole day being May the 6th. And then the last day or the seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread will be about the 12th. And of course, after that, we have another holy day called First Fruits. This starts the Omar count on about May the 14th. And just in case you don't catch another video on the subject, what this is about is an offering. The Omar count gives you 50 days in order to make your offering, which for those of us in agriculture consists of flour, oil, and a lamb. But once we have made that offering, then we can start to eat bread and grain again. So to summarize our necessary actions in order to fulfill our requirements due at the Feast of Passover during the second month, just like the first month on the first day, the evening of May the 4th, the twilight hours, we will take a bath or at least wash our feet just like the Messiah did back there with the disciples during the Last Supper. That's extremely important right there at the beginning of this communion celebration. Then we'll read scripture on this day, praying and meditating, of course. And I would suggest that on that day, you read John chapter 15, chapter 16, and chapter 17 which was our Messiah's last address to us before he was crucified. In other words, those chapters make up the Passover sermon. So I would suggest that we read that as our scripture for Passover. Again, allowing the divine essence of that word to be placed on our heart. And after that, we'll start the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And again, I would suggest you read or listen to the Book of True Life or the Third Testament of the Bible for that entire week, after which you'll start looking forward to making your offering. So look for links to those and other books here at the end of this video. And if you have any questions or anything, please put them in the comment section below. We still work to answer all questions in the comment section. And we look forward to hearing from you guys. So with that, we're going to close this video out. And may our Heavenly Father, honor to his name, bless you and protect you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Heavenly Father lift up his face to you and grant you peace.